Doctor Who show about shooting Gatwin. There's so much white mediocrity that gets celebrated. No, it's mediocrity that gets celebrated, right? It's not about white or black. There's a lot of black mediocrity that gets celebrated too. Uh, uh, like you, quite frankly, shooting. Right, every says you're the dog's bollocks. Right, you were the great. Like everything you do is great. Right, right. I mean, here, let me flick over here. It, honestly, fuck off. Yeah, yeah. This, this is not. It, stop, stop. Like, this is not Doctor Who, mate. I'm sorry. Like, like you. Twerk the fucking camera and like it highly sexualized. This is not Doctor Who. Yeah, no, there's too many sexual glances. Like I can't wait for you to fuck me. Right? Stop. It, uh, that's not hate. I just saw you prance fucking around in front of me and shake your booty, saying, "Please fuck me, Daddy." Like I, I, I don't know. One they all fucking love you in Hollywood. I, I, I don't know what to say. Okay, actually, the gut were is running his first season of Doctor Who promoting. No, not promoting it, demoting it. Uh, uh, with a listening of woke grievances from the white mediocrity to transphobia. Okay, Gat were born in Rwanda and raised in Scotland. Oh, you're welcome. We, you're welcome because we, we let, you know, we bring people in. All right, uh, uh, and help them out. Right, uh, I bet you're grateful. Right, other uh, rather than you know. Uh, uh, let's just say, if you see the movie, uh, 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 was it Beast of uh, Beast of Another Nation? Hey, I must say. Now I got to look up later. It's a great movie. Uh, it's Idris Elba movie. Idris Elba. Idris Elba would not be a good Dan Dare. I want to be, be very clear. Not not because he would not cool, but he would. Uh, Beast of No Nation. Yeah, yeah. That would have been your life if, like, if you uh, um, and it's on Netflix. I recommend it. That would have been your life if not for the uh, uh, the generosity, right, and the open heartness of the British people. So yeah, so uh, uh, you know, white, straight, working class people, you know, are the majority. So uh, uh, let's see how grateful you are. Gatwa, born in Rwanda, raised in Scotland, did not hold back his opinions on a range of political topics. No. Oh! Somebody tell him to shut the fuck up. Prance at the fucking camera. In an interview with Attitude magazine, the actor who rose to fame in Netflix series Sex Education accused British politicians of bigotry for suggesting restrictions on grotesque sterilization procedures in children and imposing male dominance of uh, women's sports. Okay. So this is a bright box way of saying this. Like, I could be more easygoing. They uh, oppose, uh, uh, he called them bigots because they oppose the inherent problems of uh, unrestricted trans ideology. Notably, the death of female sports uh, and female spaces, right? Uh, and the debilitous effects on children uh, uh, for transgender treatments, right? So um, you shouldn't call them bigots for that. Right, that the, that you're calling them a bigot means you don't have an answer. All right, it makes you look bad, and in your, you know why we look like you don't have an answer because you don't have an answer. Right, what can you do? What can you tell me? You can fucking do this. This is you, right? Can you? Yeah, Doctor was smart. The Doctor was clever, and Doctor could answer questions. Right? Oh, fuck me, and I really wanted to fucking like him. Right, like like. I don't even know what to tell you. What? Why is this a good idea? Like that. Look at that. That little coy. Like I'm gonna fuck you. Uh, um, uh, everything trickles down from the top, and when you see politicians openly attacking marginalized communities, uh, uh, again, no one's attacking the trans world, right? Saying trans people, saying say trans women are women, is a belief. It's not a fact. It's your belief. Now, that belief may be real, maybe not. I believe it's not. But nonetheless, that's what it is. It's a belief. And only a belief. 
Um, so you, again, I think it's highly bigoted. You call them bigots, right? Uh, only attacking trans people. Uh, wait, wait. What's marginalized? What was openly attacking marginalized communities and trans people? Right, it makes it okay for a real like. Who, give me an example. What are you talking about? That that this gay prancing piece of shit that you're putting in front of me, like I find it highly inappropriate. I mean, honestly, disgusting. Right, I really do. Like, the more I say it, the more fucked off I, I I get with it. Right, that makes me a bigot, does it? All right, right. No, you you're shit at your job. Uh people are the most vulnerable. You you own society, you dumb cunts. Most vulnerable, you are the most privileged fox in the entire universe. You make white, you know, white, wealthy, college educated women seem uh, uh 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 you know bereft in comparison. The previous most privileged people in the entire creation ever. Uh who the most vulnerable? The most disenfranchised. How many disenfranchised? I'm sorry, I don't think chicks with dicks are girls. Oh, I'm not even saying I'm right. I'm saying I don't what why does that make me a bigot? Do you believe God spoke to Moses? Well, if you don't, you're a bigot too, then. I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, can we have a, can we have one standard that that we we both either either you're a bigot and I'm a bigot or neither of us are bigots? How about neither of us, right? I'm happy for neither of us to be bigots, right? You don't need to believe that God spoke to Moses, right? You don't need that, right? It's fine. You don't, and, and you're not a bigot if you don't think that. But equally, I do think God spoke to fucking Moses, right? And he didn't. I'm not saying round you up and put you in a camp. Right? I'm saying I look at the world differently from you. Uh, that's not... Uh, um, uh, you know, calling me a bigot because I don't... I don't I'm, I don't go along with your bullshit. Uh, it's so crazy. Right? Did I say it was on Twitter? I saw this clip from the woman trying to get the job of uh, the takeover from... What's her name? Angela Rayner. Apparently, she she's she's been ousted, right? I, that, that's one thing that ha happened over uh, you know, over Sabbath, uh, and I'm not surprised, right? I'm not surprised, man. There's all these uh, uh, um, American protests. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. It, uh, it, it's definitely on this timeline, right? I saw it around here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Now I can't find it. Right? It's always a bloody way. Uh, I'll go a little bit more. If I don't sit in a minute, I'll give up. But it's uh, uh, whoever it is try, uh, who who's in, in in the running to be the deputy neighbor. And they said, "Look, it, we can't have a discussion about trans uh, um, about transphobia or trans issues in society if you don't agree that trans women are women." No, that's the end of the discussion, not the beginning. I don't agree that trans women are women. I don't agree they should be. Uh, um, disenfranchise or hurt in any way, right? I don't agree to that, right? But I don't agree that women... What? Why Why do I have to think what you think? Ah. Uh, like, honestly, why do I have to think what... What, uh, um, uh, what you think? Well, that's a good bit of news. We'll look at that in a minute. Hang on, hang on. Let's see if I can... Find it. I'm still looking for this clip. Uh... Da -da -da. Uh, what's George Gallery saying? Uh, uh, if uh, he's saying, he's saying they Iran should use, use nukes. Look, I, I have to tell you, from my crazy religious perspective, I, I would love that. I would love Iran to send nukes over, right? I would love that, uh, uh because I think that would initiate, you know, initiate a messy in a cage. So, uh, um, I, I, I will be to uh, totally up for that. But, like, again, shoot you, mate. I, I, this is your religion, right? Stop forcing it on me. Stop and stop telling me I'm not allowed to have my religion is hateful when it's not in any way, shape, or form, right? Why are you doing that, 
right? And like, like, why? It's it's unbelievable. Oh, oh, oh hang on, I remember it was right, right next to here. Uh, no, not there. No. Ah, uh, I mean the thing. Yeah, the, here's the thing. Twitter wants to be a uh, a video hub, right? Uh, uh, the interface sucks ass for it. I'm sorry. They want to be like a TikTok like video hub. Uh, uh, fine, I can't find it. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> I keep saying like lot, lot, lots of not non sequiturs. Okay, fine, we're back to that again. Ah, oh, which I can find the bloody thing. So annoying. Ah, I should, have, I should have bookmarked it. Maybe I did. I don't think I did. No, just uh, uh more. Okay, more shooting cut. One. Oh crap. Okay, fine. Where were we? Uh, what the hell is this ad? Like, man, there's all these like diagrams of women's. What, what's going on with that? What the hell? I totally didn't notice that. Uh, um. Where we up to? Uh, I'm most, I'm, I can't see, this is why I stopped reading it. I, I mean, like, I couldn't get my head, like, stop already. Most disconnects from everyone else and being told that they, uh, that they are threat. Uh, they are the threats. What are you talking about? Are you talking about uh, refugees? What well, you, you know, all those uh, uh, military aged males sw swarming the country, uh, getting lots of benefits, like, right? and also in America too, also across Europe. Looks a bit fishy to me. Is that? Do you think that's directed by anybody? Are we allowed to look into that, or are we racist if we, you know, look at how it's obviously being directed? It's sick because it's hiding away from your own ineptitude. What are you talking about? What do you mean hiding away from your own ineptitude? I have no idea. Uh, you're going to put the blame on, okay, here, blame on immigrants and black and brown people, trans people. It's not the blame. I just don't agree with you. You know, like, I think people should, uh, 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 shouldn't enter the country legally, right? I think people shouldn't, and I don't think that's a extremist position. I am sorry. I don't care the skin color. I don't think you should enter a country illegally. I don't think the country should be financially supporting those who, who enter a country illegally, right? I don't believe that's a good idea, right? I, 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 I don't, I think the um, immigration system, refugee system is being abused massively. Uh, uh, I don't think that's a racist idea. I'm sorry. Right? So I'm not blaming black and brown people. Just, uh, 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 you know, I'm blaming the illegal immigration, which seems to be done by lots of black and brown people. Right? Uh, trans people. I'm not blaming trans people. I I'm saying I, I don't have the same worldview. I believe in God. Right? I, I believe there are two genders. Right? I'm not... And again... If you don't, if it's okay for you not to believe that Moses talked to God, or believe a, a, a Christian uh, when he says that um, Jesus was the Son of God, right? If you're not prepared to that, then why why are you forcing us to take on your religion? Because it's science fact. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. There are no things as chicks with dicks, right? I, I think we've established this quite quite. Uh, uh, look, we have the science here, right? We have the science. Wait, where is it? Let me. Uh, let me pull out that study, right? No, there are no chicks with dicks, Johnny. Only guys with tits. Yeah, Ted knows what he's talking about, mate. Ted knows what he's talking about. It's uh, 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 it's a bit normal. It's a joke, an adult joke for us adults. Exactly, exactly. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> I have to keep interrupting this because it's so stupid. I like you want to slap myself in the face with a sock full of my own manure rather than these shit. So I'm not, no, no, I don't blame you that we have a different worldview. Queer people. Okay, here's the thing. I think there should be public decency. I don't think there should be open sexuality on the streets. I don't think there should be public nudity. I don't think there should be public salaciousness. Frankly, I think grid girls is basically a line for public. I think. Other, more than that, fuck off. No. Right. Um, yeah, Jen, I think grid, grid girls is your line. Uh, 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 this, like, your pride parades are disgusting. There's naked people running around, covered like, like in, in front of children. It's disgusting. That's not an extreme. I'm not blaming you. I'm saying, can you stop doing that, please? Right. 
Uh, to hide the fact you're not uh, doing anything for people. Well, I, I think opposing that is doing something for people. It's just easier to create discord amongst people and divide and conquer, isn't it? No, you self-obsessed, vapid cunt, right? And I'm, I want to like your Doctor Who. Fuck me, you don't understand. I want to like your Doctor Who, right? And then you do this, you... you I mean, like, really? Oh, God. You're doing, like, a fuck me dance. Right? I, I, I'm sorry, mate. In, in your Doctor Who costume. Like, oh, fuck off. In your, I mean, you've got a, uh, a sonic screw that does look like a sex toy. Like, I, I tell you, mate. Uh, the Barbie actor said, Catwell's comments are reportedly uh, regarding uh, leader of the United Kingdom's Conservative Party. Darling, they're basically Labour. The, today's Conservative Party are more left than 2000's Labour Party. Frankly. Uh, Catwell's comments are reportedly uh, regarding the leaders of the United Kingdom's Conservative Party who have been in control uh, uh, of the executive branch since 2019. Yes, because why? Because they ran a socialist anti-Semite as their leader on a platform of socialism and anti-Semitism. And the British public were like, uh, fuck off. Fuck off. Right? And, and here's the thing. I actually like Jeremy Corbyn when he first arrived. I'm like, oh, man, he suddenly talks like a human being. Uh, I, I, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. And it was a human being who's an anti-Semite. Right? Uh, uh, who, could, who could not condemn anti-Semitism. It couldn't come out of his lips. I condemn that uh, all forms of hatred, but especially all forms, but especially anti semitism Oh, yes, all forms. Well, just say anti semitism I just did. No, you didn't. You said all forms. Yeah, they include that. I uh, specifically anti semitism Can you say it? No. How'd that work out for you? And they didn't stay in power because any any fucking ability. The Tories are useless. Oh, oh. I have to tell you, the Tories are fucking useless. Chinless fucking wonders, idiot cunts. Oh. I only say that because I love them so much. <laughs> uh, and they've been under attack for pushing back against illegal immigration and transgender propaganda. Yeah. And now, big time with the cast report, right? Stop, leave those kids alone, you pervert cunts. Uh, uh, oh, what's, what's that shirt David Tennant wore? Uh, leave trans kids alone. Let's see if we can find that shirt. David Tennant, leave trans kids alone. Right? Well, uh, uh, you seem to be on the wrong side of that debate, don't you? There you go. You twat. <laughs> I mean, really? You twat. That, I, that's that's really where I am. You twat, David Tennant. Leave trans kids alone, you absolute freak. No, apparently you're the freak, mate. Apparently you're, uh, you owe us an apology now. Are we going to get that out of you? Uh, you know, your career is uh, uh, not quite as solid as it used to be. Yeah, so do I. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, David, mate. <laughs> I think uh, people have had enough. Uh, you were wrong. Oh... Uh, lastly, the British government said it would require schools to inform parents of science of their child in, uh, engaging in transgenderism. Well, of course, as well as prohibit trans students from joining uh, contact sports uh, of, the, of the opposite sex. Well, yeah, otherwise they beat the shit out of the girls. Right? And again, they want the debate to start with you agreeing that trans women are women, if not you're racist. No, you haven't made the case. You haven't made the case. You say trans women are women. Make that case. Prove it. And yeah, you know, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't not appeal to authority. You know, make that case because I my belief system is trans women are not women, right? Because again, I believe in Judeo Christian values, right? I, I believe in Judeo Christian dot God, and that's not hateful. That's how he did. Look, I, do I hate Christians? I like Christians. I admire Christians, quite frankly. Uh, um, I admire the, uh, we call it in he uh, Hebrew, uh, the Vekas Hashem, the, the way Christians really cleave to and trust in God, right? Uh, I, I see that a lot, right? And the, the 
sincerity and honesty of their prayer. Yeah, I. But like, fundamentally, we believe different things, right? I mean, for God, goodness sake. Uh, um. But it doesn't matter. We believe different things. Fine. Uh, elsewhere in the interview uh, with Attitude, God, surely, mate. Gatron insisted that uh, he needed to find a path towards self love and acceptance. How much more self love? Really? You're, you're having trouble with self love, are you, Shooty? Really? You know, me, media uh, hermit, right? Uh, you, you, this is a man really has trouble with self love. Yeah. If you're doing this and you're Doctor Who and you think you're doing a good job, you have too much self-love, right? You have too much self-love. Oh, God in heaven. I'm glad that picture was up that because that really is a good juxtaposition. Uh, uh, and lamented what he called white mediocrity, claiming... It gets celebrated while black people have to be absolutely flawless in order to be treated half as well. Well, yeah, I believe you there. Yeah, yeah, look, if you're in the entertainment industry, it's full of very racist white people. That's true. That's the entertainment industry. They're cunts. We don't like them, right? We don't like They are racist white people, right? Okay, we all agree. Everybody agrees, right? You and me, it doesn't mean that's the norm. Right, I'm sorry you're in industry with uh, uh, racist cunts, racist white people cunts. Right, I am. I think they've destroyed it. Right, but I think you've been, you've leaned into that racism shooting. Right, you have like, oh yes, I'm a protected class. You know, I'm sorry, but you should like this. This was racist in 2017. Yeah, I'm sorry Trump made you so crazy. I'm sorry Brexit made. If you knew that Brexit wasn't going to happen, if you, 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 would you be any better? Would you be, be happier? Um, and it's not black people have to be absolutely full, uh, flawless. You have to do a good job, right? Your promotion of Doctor Who has been abysmal, I, and I'm not saying it has been absolutely abysmal, right? And the trailer wasn't good. Here, let's pull up the trailer. The trailer wasn't good enough, right? The trailer wasn't good enough. Um, here, one second. Where's that, where's that trailer? Uh, over here. One second. Fine. Season one trailer. Ready for this? I get, again, I'm super ready. You're not. You're not doing anything, mate. Give me the loving. Fuck, I hate it. Yeah, I mean, like, really? The wink? I hate that wink. But apparently that's his thing, right? Apparently that's his thing, the wink, right? Uh, uh, that's his scarf. Now, stay back. We are going to rock through time. Uh, here, uh, this frame really shows how, how... See how he's, like, in the center? He, hey, this isn't Doctor Who. Doctor Who... It is a um, he's he's he lacks self awareness. He he's a eccentric professor. He's a nutty professor, right? I think they all kind of fit into that realm. Let's have a look. Uh, William Hartnell, yeah, eccentric professor. Patrick Troughton, eccentric professor. Uh, uh, John Pertwee, eccentric professor, stroke spy. Right, John Baker, eccentric uh, uh, professor, like very much a Cambridge professor. Uh, Colin Baker, I mean, uh, Peter Davison. Uh, uh, well, he's more like the guy from um, uh, a very peculiar practice. But yeah, he's kind of like your your cool college professor, Colin Baker, a cool college professor. Uh, uh, Sylvester McCoy, cool college professor. Uh, um, the uh, uh, eighth doctor, right? Paul McGann, cool college professor. Uh, uh, Again, you, like like you would love having uh, Christopher Eccleston as your college professor, right? Same with uh, David Tennant. Same with Matt Smith. Same with Peter Capaldi. Fuck off, Jody, uh, 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 and everything after that, right? But like, oh, like like this isn't cool, right? Uh, uh, it's not like <sighs> yeah, you know, he's too into himself, 
right? He's, he is too into himself. Oh, God. What a fuck, baby. I like so much of it. This is gay in your in innuendo. What, you're telling me that's not gay you in innuendo? Oh, this is so Bridgerton. This is Ruby. You are wild, Ray. And she was fired and then uh, hastily stitched together in the second season without they had to wrap up uh, 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 the, uh, the story arc. Fly Highland says Jodie was a Blue Peter presenter. Yeah, a particularly bad one. Even rude. No, you made it worse. Where shall we? She is such the best thing about this production. And I'm not saying that because she's gorgeous. She is such, I mean, that look, a well delivered line. Brave. First one in this trailer. Rude. Ah! No, you made it worse. Where shall we go? Anywhere. It's you. Space Baby. Oh, is it the universe, man? Let's have a random landing. Is it safe? Listen to me. This is what we're trying to stop. Oh. She's the only thing that reminds me of Doctor Who in this trailer. All of life extinguished. You'll keep us safe? No, you won't. No, you won't. It, you'll be too off, like, too busy off getting fucked in the arse in some gay club while she's being, you know, mind raped by the Daleks, for fuck's sake. As so, yeah, somebody please make that into a T-shirt. <laughs> I will keep us safe. Oh, stop with your crying. Stop. Be the fuck off. Doesn't make you vulnerable, makes you a pussy. Oh. Come on. We've got work to do. <laughs> There's a storm coming in. You called. Are you, are you, look at this. Like, like, what you're putting on screen isn't good enough. Right? To get past your bullshit. Oh, white people have it so much easier. Coming in. You called. Honey, I'm much bigger bang than you bargained for. I was... uh, stop with the honey. Bigger bang. Everything sexual. Shatter this silly little battlefield into dust. Uh, you're not impressive. Is it? You're not good at doing the, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, big David Tennant, you know, or Matt Smith, or Peter Capaldi. You can't do it, I'm afraid. Here's, look, Shooting Gatwell's problem is this. He's a very, 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 very pretty boy, right, who happens to be the right colour, uh, skin colour, for uh, a social... Um, uh, what was it? So, for, uh, the right skin colour for, like, social... Not so... Okay, you know, for social gain, right? Uh, uh, and... and you got told you uh, had more ability than you do. And, and cause, look, the voice just doesn't really carry, right? It's not It's not really working, right? I think Russell just, like, is hot for you. And I really think that's what it is. In a heartbeat, into dust. It's not working, mate. I'm sorry. I don't have a people. I don't have a... See, there works like that should have been his costume that really should have been his costume it's quirky it's cool it's different it's a different look I, that should have been his costume it, it it shows that you're somebody who's outside of time right you are somebody so nailed down into this time uh man Again, this should have been his costume. Home, but I have freedom. Catching monsters, getting into scrapes. So I keep moving on. To see the next thing. And the next, and the next. Have you ever... Oh, God, I'm sick of the smug doctor. All right. I don't like this doctor. I'll be probably... A I, I liked him in the Church of Ruby Road, right? I'm, I'm open it. Uh, 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 it, it, nah, this is coming. This is this look. Really looks like it's gonna suck. Have you ever felt so alive? Really? Have you ever felt so alive? What? You are literally killing your career in this show. And that's just the beginning. I guess stop with the smug. 
I wish you'd understand you haven't earned the smug. Right? You have not earned the smug. Uh, not long ago now, though. Only for a few weeks. Come on, Apocalypse. You come first. Anyway, uh, elsewhere in the interview, uh, uh, fine, yeah. There's so, uh, 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 there's so much white mediocrity that gets accepted, and black people, we have to be absolutely flawless to get half, uh, uh, half that way. Sex education, I said, so I'm slowly training myself, the, uh, uh, training myself out of that and being like, no shit, you deserve just love for existing. Well, yeah. Okay, but I'm saying you're doing a bad job on this television. Like, okay, if I'm evaluating you by existing, yeah, you're great shooting. Fan fucking fantastic. I happen to be evaluating you on this specific metric on how you are in Doctor Who. And fuck me, what a disaster. Right? Like, like that's not you should be erased from reality. <laughs> right? That's funny. I was talking to uh, um, a, uh, a younger rabbi I know, right? Nice, nice guy, really, really nice guy. And I was like trying to impress upon him the uh, uh, the importance of a point. And as a side point, I pointed out that uh, uh, you know one of the last interactions he made a really dumb mistake, right? Like really stupid mistake, right? Uh, um, and it was just like super, 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 it was, like it, the opposite of what he wanted to do. I say so. Pay attention. As a that's what he fixated on while I was talking about the you know the fate of the universe. <laughs> I was like, dude. It's okay if you screw up. We all screw up. I actually quoted Tom Baker, right, I, from Robots of Death, right? One of my favorite scenes in Doctor Who. Like, I, I love this moral ambiguity in Doctor Who, right? Not the moral, not ambiguity, moral depth, right? When uh, was it D? Was it D thirteen from Robots of Death? D something or other. D, uh, uh, who was really an ant super voc, right? Uh, he realized he hasn't checked uh, the, uh, the personnel files against me before they came on the ship. Uh, of the sand miner, I should say. And he goes, I have failed, right? It's in that beautiful voice. And then Tom Baker's like, yes, but uh, 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 congratulations, failure is one of the basic freedoms. Like, don't... People People are like, really, really hate the idea of them failing. If, you don't, if you're too scared to fail, you'll never do anything in life. Don't be scared of failure, right? Because failure means you, have, you, you can have some successes as well. Right, you need the balls to have the failure. Um, speaking of having failure, let's look at the new Doctor Who. <laughs> and that's always been a not more uh, loving as well, in a weird way. Gatwa added, "Yeah, this is not loving. This is self-obsessed." Gatwa is the first black actor to play the character of Doctor Who. Well, not really, you got uh, uh, Doctor Ruth. Uh, not that I consider that really Doctor Who. I don't consider I don't consider Doctor Ruth any less Doctor Who than shooting Gatwa Doctor Who. You're right. I, I, it's just it's not Doctor Who for me. Uh, after actually Jodie Whittaker became Doctor Who's first incarnation woman, cr crashing the show. It's all been advertised as the first queer iteration. Yeah, why? Like it's saying it's queer is in, in, inherently sexual. For God's sake! Um, it was introducing during a string of anniversary specials that brought back former star David Tennant, only have a transgender character dress him down. Because of his male sex, yes. Because they're all so, uh, uh, you know, stunning and brave. It, it's so crazy. Right, shooty. I really want to like, you know, like you. Right, I really want to like you. Oh, man, you're blowing it. Like, on a real genuine level. I, it's, it's, this is a car crash I'm watching. Right, in slow motion. It, it, it really is. And it's sad. Like, I, yeah, I wanted to like you. Uh, let's see. Doctor Who Star demands of your face against one classic villain. Uh, in fact, 15. Doctor uh, Season 14 expresses desire. Classic villain. He's going to say he's going to meet up with the Daleks, right? I, I assume. Uh, Shooting out, we're joined by uh, companion Millie Gibson, not for long. Uh, get us to play the 50s Doctor in the classic time travel series, Doctor Who, uh, season 14, blah, 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 speaking of Entertainment Weekly. Uh, I better ha uh, have faced a Dalek, I bet you. I don't know. Um, I've, I've heard chats about me not ever facing a Dalek. I'll be angry if that's the case. By the time I'm done with Doctor Who, I better have faced... You got, I don't think you've got more than two seasons. 
And that's only because they're filming the second season now, right? I, I, I uh, um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I, I, I think if he don't have the script for it now, forget it. It's not happening. Shooting. I, uh, I look, mate. It might go a third. Yeah, you know, it might be very successful, right? Don't look like it, does it? No. No, it doesn't look like it, does it? No. <laughs> David Tennant. You twat. David Tennant, you twat, is all I can say. Oh, all that twattery, right? So much twattery, so much David Tennant. Uh, okay, let's put a big finish. Doink. Uh, Survivor Cell. I don't know, not really. Tarrant, I'm looking forward to. I want that. What's that come out? It's that's in uh what when is that? June. Oh, a couple of months away. Fine. Uh what is it? News. So first off, so this is interesting. I I'll I by the way, the yeah, sometimes versus the Russo's climax reach its climax. Ooh, uh, ah, with the war dogs. I, I I'm looking I haven't listened to this yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh so this is interesting. They've got the Dave Bradley crew they're bringing back as an Unbound Doctor, and I guess so they can keep the Stephen Noonan first Doctor going. David Bradley, obviously, portrayed the Doctor in Adventure Space and Time and uh, Twice Upon a Time, and whenever, whenever they can basically wheel him out as a Doctor. David Bradley returns as a Doctor as he and his friends find themselves in a series of big, uh, big bold and bright unbound adventures from the uh, adventures on Big Finish uh, production. So does that mean they're going to do like try and do the um, like the Cushing movies with it? That would be a really good idea, right? That would that would be a great idea. One day I shall come back. Yes, yeah, we'll we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, um, since April twenty twenty, the Big Finish production full cast audio drums for the first Doctor's. Uh, with Stephen Noonan. Excellent, right? Excellent. And Laura Canese says Dodo. I really recommend those sets. Not and not because I like I like Stephen Noonan a lot, right? It's because they're they're good. But I do like Stephen Noonan a lot. The <laughs> Lauren Cornelius is probably even more. Uh, uh now that she's so hot, Lauren Cornelius. Fine. Let's put, let's put up a picture of Lauren Cornelius. I mean she she really is. she's she's the perfect companion and they really bounce off each other beautifully. Who were uh, I like okay. That's a very attractive person. I am sorry, right? That is a very very attractive person. Uh, so, although she look she looks best when she's with Stephen Noonan. <laughs> right? What do you want me to tell you? Okay. Yes, that is a very very attractive person. Right? Okay. So anyway, I I digress. So <laughs> sorry, Lauren. You. you you waylaid me. <laughs> um, I should face what Lauren Cornelius. That'd be interesting. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we can think. Think to cast her. <laughs> um, I should really do a Stephen Noonan uh, uh, Dodo, the uh, first Doctor Dodo, doing it with face swaps. I should really try that. I bet. I bet he'll like that. <laughs> Uh, fine. So, anyway, so there are some new old faces back. The originals, you might say, slightly different. David Bradley, first Doctor, returns with uh, uh, Gemma Powell as Barbara Wright, uh, Jamie Oliver in Chester. I quite liked his in Chester, and Claudia Grant as Susan Foreman. An interesting take on Susan Grant, uh, Susan Foreman, right? Susan, uh, um, bit too posh, but okay. The Court played the roles in uh, the very first, um. Uh, Cast in the uh, 2013 biopic Adventure Time and Space. Then they began a serious audio adventure with the first Doctor. They basically went downhill, right? So the first Doctor of the first Doctor and Bound is about. So what 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 are they doing with this? That's the question. Uh, September 25, they will unleash. Oh, good, it's a year away. Uh, uh, into a series of that breaks free from established continuity. Uh, tell its own surprising story. So tell me more, right? It's. Uh, Oh, yeah, it's only a uh, 13 pounds download. That sounds pretty good. Uh, producer uh, uh, David O'Malley said, uh, the Peter Cushing films featured in the 96s were our stylistic inspiration. Ah, excellent idea. Excellent idea. Uh, I'm really on board for this, right? I'm really on board for this. 
uh, here. The uh, lighter tone, the uh, spirit of high adventure, true technical. I love this idea. Uh, I don't. Why? Why aren't they doing the just doing it as a cushing? Well, I don't understand. So is it rights issue? Maybe. Uh, we want all these adventures that have that bank holiday or Sunday afternoon feeling. Ah, I am so up for this. This sounds awesome, right? Doesn't it sound awesome? Yes, it sounds awesome. Uh, we combine the, uh, this with the brilliant cast of BBC's anniversary of special adventures, uh, adventure in space time, led by David Bradley. Uh, working with such a wonderful cast and exceptional uh, creator team, we have created a, uh, a a time fracture leading to a separate universe. Uh, it might not be canon, or is it? Uh, uh, but it's going to be brilliant. I love it. Yeah, this is what they should be doing. This sounds fun. Uh, I kind of excited I am to be taking the uh, taking charge of the first Doctor Adventures Unbound. First Doctor Unbound, similarly to Lost Stories range, making these stories Unbound uh, uh, the, to television continuity. Uh, of Doctor Who gives us a wonderful cre uh, creative freedom to explore. The hunger... Uh, I, I can't wait to see what they're going to be doing with them. Like, like I think we're going to get like a movie uh, a Cushing uh, uh, Vord, maybe. I mean, like, there's a lot they could do with this. That'd be really fun. Uh, I can't tell you how... Blah, 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 first one, blah, uh, uh, making these uh, unbound stories to television continuity gives us... Uh, yeah, it gives us a wonderful creative freedom to explore the characters... Stories and styles, uh, yeah. So I don't know. Will they be doing like, uh, um, will it be like one story? Uh, you know, or like how, how many discs? Are there? Is it one story over two discs, three discs? Well, I guess we'll find out in a minute. I'll, I'll, we'll, uh, we'll go and look at it. Um, it's a really good idea. I can't. I'm very excited about this. Uh, the hunger to create some new stories inspired by various parts of the universe has driven so many big, uh, big Finish productions. Uh, to bring this doctor and set him in these adventures uh, is like unearthing a treasure trove or potentially exciting tales. Yeah, I agree. In the tales, volume one, Doctor Unbound. So how many discs is it? Is the question. So is it September next year? Man, that's a long time away. Written by L.R. Hay. Don't know who that is. Right? And it's two discs. Okay, so it's basically, I guess it's one story. Right, I hope so. I hope it's like one story spread off top two discs, and it's got. I hope they do the music like that. This sounds a lot of fun, right? This sounds like a lot of fun. I wonder if he's playing it more like the Cushing version, right? Uh, uh, this does sound like a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I, uh, I am up for that, right? Yeah, I think a problem that most people have, well, I have it. Is the just overt sexualization of Doctor Who, right? It, and it's so, it just it's it's really weird, right? It's wildly inappropriate. And I think I think this Mad TV many years ago actually nailed this completely, right? Here, one second. There we go. Uh, video file. Blink. And now, children's letters to Dennis Rod. Hey, kids. Growing up is always a struggle. <laughs> Take it from Isn't this like shooty? This is the, totally the vibe I get from uh, um, shooty guy was Doctor Who. This is 100% the vibe I get. Right? I mean, isn't the vibe that you get? It's totally the vibe I get. What is this? Hang on. Oh, yeah. There you go, Doink. Um, yeah. Me, Dennis Rob. I know what it's like. Most of my life, I was WFO, wide mm, open, you know? So today, I'm going to be reading some letters from some very special children. Now, this letter comes from James, age 13. I mean, the only thing is, his voice is much more commanding and, you know, it feels more like the doctor. It feels much more masculine. Dear Dennis, I ran away from home two weeks ago. I'm hungry, I'm cold, I'm scared. Can I go back home? I don't know what to do. Signed, James. Uh, again, this really feels like the new era of Doctor Who. Like, freak, freak, freakishly so. Well, James, people like Dennis Rodman, we're not accepted in life, right? Dennis Rodman is different, right? Dennis Rodman is funky. Dennis Rodman changes people's lives, you know? Dennis Rodman likes to play with people, and people like to play with Dennis Rodman. You know, I mean, what the hell is James? This is Shuligawa! 
It's just, okay, this is basically a weird prediction of the future. How did this happen? Angel, I'm a bad boy right now. You know, I'm bouncing. You know, I'm not ashamed of my body. My body's not ashamed of me. Huh? But you gotta try something new, you know, something different. I mean, life is one big party, James. So you gotta be loose. You gotta be wide open. You gotta party and party and party. <laughs> I hope that helps. Uh, th yes, this is the advice that Shooter's Doctor will give to a six year old who's just run away. Next. <laughs> Next letter is from Eugene. He's 10 years old. <clears throat> Dear Dennis. My teacher's always keeping me after school for stuff I ain't even do. How should I deal with this? Sign Eugene. Well, Eugene, the first thing you gotta do is change that bitch-ass name. <laughs> <laughs> the second thing you gotta do, man, is get a haircut, man. You look like Malibu Barbie or something. You know? <laughs> but this is what I suggest to you. You wait until after school when everybody's gone, right? You lock the door. Okay, and then you take your teacher in the corner, you sink her elbow in her chest, right? <laughs> then you hit butt in the chin, and then when she's all dazed and confused, you grab her by the jersey and slam her butt on the floor. You gotta get in her head, James. You gotta mess with the game. If that don't work, you gotta be loose, baby. You gotta be wide open, you know, because I'm bouncing right now. <laughs> Again, you kind of felt like Ralph C. Davis was sitting around watching this and says, I wonder if I can make this a new Doctor Who. Right? Oh, there you go. Hey, Wayne. Cat just popped up in. Oh, that's it. What the hell? Really, Wayne? Really? Uh, okay, that's what happens when you empty the garbage can. Uh, right. Thankfully, there was nothing in it. Uh, uh, anyway. If we were also here, I was literally sitting around going, I bet I can make this Doctor Who and make everybody, like, defend it. Dennis Rodman like to play with people and people like to play with Dennis Rodman. I'm not ashamed of my body. Who got next? And that, that is Shooter Goa. Yeah, people don't play with Shooter Goa. I'm not, but it exactly sounds better. <clears throat> this is from Sarah. She ate. <laughs> Dear Dennis, my parents are going to get a divorce. That would make me so unhappy. You are my hero. Oh, this is a nice one. Please help. Sign Sarah. <sighs> well, Sarah, what's your mama look like? She real good looking? Send it around the picture. <laughs> If she ain't, she butt up. They send her to try with a picture of your daddy. <laughs> Seriously. But, Isn't that funny? That was, like, shocking back then. Here's what Dennis Rodman does when he's unhappy. Okay, first I find a new place to pierce myself, right? And then I put on my favorite wedding dress and my boa. Sometimes I wear the pink one or the green one or the blue one. Whatever matches my lipstick, right? And then I go to Vegas with 200 of my closest friends and I do them all twice. Because that gets me bouncing, right? Because Dennis Rodman likes to play with people and people like to play with Dennis Rodman. Because you know I'm not ashamed of my body, right? My body... This is... Shooty Gatwa. I, I get I know it's the same commentary I keep going, but this is Shooty Gatwa's Doctor Who. I'm not ashamed of me, but you eight years old. What the hell you know? <laughs> uh, that, that's all the time we have for children's letters to Dennis Rodman. I, I was talking to a, a fellow YouTuber today. They, they said, you know, the problem is this, that, you know, they, they're, they're marketing th this guy uh, as a degenerate, right? <laughs> And Johnny Whittaker names a proudest Doctor Who moment. Oh, it's my bestest, proudest Doctor Who moment ever. Oh, Ecky Fump. Really, Jody? Oh, I. Oh, it's a good moment. Um, Johnny Whittaker remembers the experience that made us see Doctor Who as a shared breath that creates joy. What the fuck does that mean? A shared breath that creates joy? Are you high? What's this shit? Oh, it's creating joy. I mean, well, are you giving me a blowjob? That's the share breath that creates. Oh, yeah, that's shit. I guess it's, I don't know. I'm sharing by blowing my dick. I don't know. It's shit. I mean, that's the what. The, the, okay. This is a stupid person who doesn't realize they're stupid trying to say something that they think is intelligent, but they don't realize it's not because they're stupid. Oh, I keep up. It brings me the shared breath that creates joy. Oh, is that like the love that doesn't make his name? Um, US Brit Boss really debuted the second season of Jimmy McCarthy anthology prison drama time. He has nothing to do with the second fucking season, as I understand it. Set in a women's prison, absolutely. This one features three women facing punishment for various adventures. 
Uh, we're focused on how the British prison system is set up to fail the women. It is supposed to reform. Uh, viewers are out there. Three episodes full of the story of Orla, Jordy Whittaker, a single. I don't give a fuck. Bella Ramsey, fuck off. Oh, God. Bella Ramsey just makes me uh, 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 irritated every time I see it. I understand you're not very hot, darling. It doesn't mean you're a bloke. Fuck me. Uh, I mean, you might be gay. Uh, I don't think you are that either. I don't. I just think you're being fashionable. I think, yeah, what can I tell you? So um, then the geek spoke to Jodie Whittaker about all the struggle. No, they fucking didn't. This is a puff piece that they spoke. No, you didn't. You didn't ever sit down with Jodie Willie with it. I mean, maybe you did, but I don't think you did. I think you're telling Porky Pies, darling. Porky Pies. Uh, Jodie looks back for the area of Doctor Who as her career moves away from science fiction towards contemporary drama. It should never move from contemporary drama. It's the only thing a little mind can cope with. Eh, I feel very nostalgic about it. I talk it all about it all the time, literally. Did you know I was Doctor Who? No, you weren't. No, I was. I was Doctor Who. I ran up down corridors. I win my little finger at Dalek. Say, darling, you weren't Doctor Who. Oh, Ecky Thump. You said it on the beginning of the episode. Yeah, they were lying. Ecky Thump. Uh, the memories uh, come up on my phone all the time. We fucking hate you, Jody. Fuck off, Jody. Oh, fuck me. All from 55. Fuck you, Jody. Oh, those memories. Oh, I. They're cherished. Oh, they're cherished. Ecky Thump. Uh, um, okay. It was an absolute joy. Four years of heaven. Darling, it was four years of having a fish shoved up your fucking ass. It was like your grandmother, your beloved grandmother just died and they, they uh, rather than bury her, threw her down and raped her in, with necrophilia in front of you. Fuck me. Joy. It's a, it's, it's a shared breath of fucking joy. Fuck off. Uh, uh, uh. And I think I'd be like this if I wasn't sleep deprived from an Iranian missile attack, frankly. Okay, I, I, I don't think that, that has changed my demeanor at all. Uh, where are we up to? Four years of absolute heaven. Oh, Ecky Thorpe, I crushed the hopes and dreams of so many young people. It was so sweet. It was so delicious. Oh, Ecky Thump. Uh, I loved everyone I worked with. They all hated you. Love the crew. Oh, I love living in Wales. Oh, God. Tourism went down, darling. <laughs> oh, um, I don't know since the departure has attended several UK, US international Doctor Who conventions uh, and been vomited on. Uh, what is S about working on Doctor Who is, is no one kicks you out the family. Really? You should meet Toxic Fandom. They just live for that. Uh, I'm always in the Who fan. You never... Oh, God, fuck off. Just keep going to Gallifrey and leave us alone, right? Uh, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm always in the Who family. Yeah, you're called the shit one. And I'll be somebody's doctor. No, you won't. These people are all lying because they feel stupid. Because they, they, you know, it's the same way of saying they think, you know, uh, uh, it's a good idea for a boy to cut off his bollocks to feel more himself. Fuck me. Yeah, that's all feeling a bit stupid now, isn't it? The cold light of fucking day. Right. Um, even if not everyone's. <laughs> Again, the people whose doc you are are like, you know, uh, one step away from committing a uh, multiple mur uh, uh, serial murder uh, uh, and then being revealed to be trans, which seems to happen like every other day now. Uh, uh, there are many moments of uh, with Doctor Who, uh, uh, when Whitaker could name as the proudest icky thought moment, but she picked the premiere episode. It was all down from there. The woman who fell to earth during the New York Comic Con, uh, the premiere, as a top choice. Yeah, do you notice how you vanish from sight from fandom after that point? Right, you hid, terrified, because we ended up seeing the shit that you were doing, and it was fucking awful, darling. It's slightly narcissistic, darling. You're quite a narcissistic person in general. Um, 
what I think is my proudest moment before people found out I was absolutely shit. Icky Bob, all oh, those days were good. Then, then, uh, uh, arachnids in the UK happened. Oh, couldn't look back after that. Um, uh, I think it's a single, but it slightly involves you. Okay. I was given the best entrance in t- uh, to a TV series in the world, falling through the roof of un- to the iconic soundtrack. Yeah, I know. And you fucked that up. Standing up to see thousands of people cheering. It was uh, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, uh, that hasn't happened since, uh, has it? And I was given a gift there to enter the series. Oh, let me enter it. Uh, uh, and I just think that the entire first episode, watching it with fans, watching it with creatives, uh, uh, who were emotionally sharing it, and everybody fucking hated it, darling. Like literally, everybody hated it. It was uh, uh, epically awful, right? Just like, like epically, epically awful. Oh, people jump out of high buildings on high and high, but uh, jump out windows on high buildings. Rather than stay in and watch Doctor Who when you're on. All right. It was, it, yeah, it didn't do well. Ah, uh, uh, it's really emotional sharing it and knowing uh, it was just being received, badly received. Uh, that's what it's like to be in this bubble. Teddy, you're in a bubble, in a bubble, darling. Uh, uh, you can be, you can be cast and uh, be doing stuff, and it's not until you hear a bit of the room that the group, and listen. They didn't do you a favor telling you you were good, telling you they enjoy it. They, that, that, keeping you in delusion is not healthy. Um, and that group breath that happens in the view. Uh, when you have a massive bill watching and sharing those moments, that sums up Doctor the shared breath that creates joy. Fucking meaningless. Fucking twaddle. Oh, can you imagine uh, uh, Tom Pertwee, uh, not Tom Pert, Tom Baker saying a shared breath that creates joy? Like, what the fuck does that mean? Can I find one second? Let me see if I can find that. Um, Tom. Uh, uh, outtakes, I think. Yeah. Uh, is this this? Where he's like reading a script, is like, what the hell is this? This is like, the, the, like this makes no sense whatsoever, right? Um, no, I'll find it. It's like he's doing some kind of reading. Uh, um, I can't remember, right? I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really can you imagine Baker saying that? No. Uh, uh, he'll be like, that's meaningless twaddle. Uh, when it was also excited about the future of the show, having passed the talks to Shuk Igatwa, uh, and fills the entire uh, his era will bring a magic on Doctor Who's new uh, uh, to a new audience around the world. No, they, she won't, right? She won't. Can you imagine? Oh, if you thought, can you imagine if you'd never seen it before? And then you get to see Neil Patrick Harris thing spice up your life. You think nobody watched that. It did badly on Disney Plus. It's such an inclusive, wonderful moment. What does that mean? Uh, that you have, you can come at any point. I'm excited if it was to click on Disney Plus and see that shoot is going to do. Darling, this is because you destroyed the series because you were shit. The joy of what keeps the show going. That's why Doctor Who has been here for 60 years. Yeah, that you fucking killed it. Oh. My name's Vila Beck in the Rabbi from Another Planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah!